Hello, this is Michel Leviathan Sorbet, and this is a new episode on the Vojennik TV YouTube channel. Today I would like to show you a game which is a very important game for me and for all our team because it is one of the games that were sponsored by our YouTube channel. We were a mediatic patron of the publishing of this game. This title is called The Iron Curtain and it was published in 2019 in Poland by Fox Games. It is not an, a new game because the original version of this game was published in 2017 by Ultra Pro. But Fox Games managed to publish a Polish version of this game and I will be showing you this Polish version during this review. The game was designed by Asger Harding Granerud, uh, who also created one of uh, the great, greatest family games of the previous years, Flamme Rouge, in Poland called Wielka Pętla. I really loved Flamme Rouge and I was anxious to try also The Iron Curtain, which is a game uh, set in the times of the Cold War. Uh, it is sometimes compared to Twilight Struggle, but if we take into consideration the fact that in the Iron Curtain we receive only 18 cards, we can be very surprised at first sight and we can ask ourselves, how is it possible to simulate the Cold War with only 18 cards? Well, in today's review I would like to explain you how this is possible. The game is for two players, one of them will be playing the USA and the second one the USSR. It is meant to be played by players aged 10 years or higher and the time of play is extremely pleasant because it is about 20 minutes. So now first of all take a look, let's take a look at the components of this title, then a few words about the mechanisms and at the end my final thoughts and my final recommendation concerning this interesting title. So let's begin. Here are all the elements which we can find inside the box of the Polish edition of the Iron Curtain. Now let's take a brief look at all of them. First of all, each player will receive a set of 24 control or influence cubes, which will be used to track influence of both players. Those cubes will be placed on cards, which will be placed on the playing area and which will be creating the world. Each time a player will gain influence in a country, such a cube will be placed. The, at the beginning of the game we have only one card, this will be the Europe card with two information. The first one will be the number of bonus points that each player can score in case of dominating such a region. The second information tells us how many cards inside the deck of cards uh, are cards which are part of this region. So for instance Europe is the region which has the most number of cards, six inside the deck of 18 cards to be used. Secondly we have also small cubes which indicate that both players start the game with one influence cube on this card. Apart from this card we receive a deck of 18 cards which all will be used during each game. The game will be divided into two rounds. During the first round each player will receive a set of five cards whereas in the second round both players will receive a hand of four cards each. Those cards represent, as you can see, different countries which can be located in different regions, in different parts of the world. As you can see, we have the name of the country, the region. We have also a flag which indicates if this is a Soviet, uh, Soviet bloc country or a US bloc country. This will influence the way that we can use such a card. We also have a certain number of cubes which tells us how many cubes we can place while playing such a card. We have both the information that I already mentioned while explaining the Europe card telling us what are the bonus points, points which we can gain, which we can obtain while dominating the majority of the cards in such a region and the number of cards which 
are part of this region. So here, for instance, I have two South American cards and those will be all the South American cards in the game. Lastly, we receive also a box with an action with a special bonus, which can be obtained while playing this card. We receive also one additional card, which will enable us to track influence uh, and a soul yellow cube, which will be moved along this influence track. Uh, if, for instance, the Soviets gain additional influence points, this cube will be moved towards the Soviet Union symbol. If at any time of the game this cube reaches the last space on the track, the game immediately ends with the victory of the corresponding block. Apart from those elements, we receive also a rule book, which as you can see is of the same size as the small box. It's a colored rule book with examples. Relatively well written, some things could have been done better, uh, but in general, because this is such a simple game to learn, uh, I had no major issues with uh, playing my first game. So this booklet is really something that does its job. Now those are all the elements, now I would like to briefly explain how the game works. The objective of the game in, Iron, in the Iron Curtain is, as I said a few moments ago, to accumulate the most possible number of influence points, possibly reaching the last space on the influence track, which would mean an automatic victory. The game is played in a, in a cycle of two rounds, during which both players will be alternatively playing cards from their hands. During the first round, each player receives five cards, from which one will not be played, because it will be placed face down at the end of such a round. It, this card will be waiting the end of the game. The remaining four cards, which are played, as I said, alternatively between players, will be placed in the playing area. And a gameplay, a play, will depend on the fact the way that a card will be used depends on its affiliation. If such a card is our own card, we can choose to use the number of cubes on the card or to use the event. If we play a card which is associated to, associated to our opponent, the opponent chooses if he wants to activate the event and we have the sole possibility to use the cubes. So this is a difference and it's very important to choose in which order we should play some cards because sometimes placing a card even with the flag of our opponent will enable him to do nothing because the prerequisites of such a card cannot be, uh, cannot be fulfilled. Now, how a play of a card looks like. Now, the first thing which we have to do while playing a card is to place such a card in the playing area. When placing such a card, we have to place such a card next to another card of the same region. The cards can be placed in an adjacent way, so no diagonal connections, only adjacency, uh, which means that such um, tableaus will be different each time because the random distribution of cards will cause uh, different structures to be built. Now, if we have a card which is part of a region which at the time of play is not present on the tableau, we can place such a card anywhere, for instance, next to the starting European card. But when such a card appears, if we play another one of the same region, we have to place it adjacent to this card. If this card is blocked because each space around this card is taken, we can place this, guy, this card anywhere just as if it was the first from this region. Now, after placing such a card, we verify if the region uh, to which this card is associated had been com has been completed. If it was the last card of such a region, we score this we score this region. We verify each and every card 
which is associated to this region and each player scores one point for uh, for the domination of such a card. Dominating a, ca dominating a card means that we have more cubes than our opponent on such a card. This will grant us one influence point. We score each of the cards which are part of such a region and then we verify if one of the players controls more cards than his opponent. In this case, no one controls more cards in the region, but if the Soviet player controlled both South American cards, he would additionally get one bonus point as indicated on the region cards. After scoring a region, we play the event or we place the cubes. Now playing the event is pretty straightforward because we just do what is, uh, what is described on the card. Placing cubes is a tricky part of the game because first of all we receive a number of cubes indicated on the card played and then we also have uh, we also have to to take uh, to take into consideration some rules governing how to place those cubes now first of all we can place a cube on every card when we all where we already have one of our cubes so we can for instance place a cube in chile uh, we also can place a cube next to a card where we have our own cubes, but we cannot make chains. So, for instance, if I wanted to place a cube at the beginning of my play on Algeria, I couldn't do this, even if I placed my first cubes on Panama, because the adjacency is verified at, before placing the first cube. Now, if our opponent has two more cubes in a country than us, we have to pay one additional cube in order to place such a cube on this card. So entering Chile in such a case would cost us one cube which would be returned to the reserve and only then I could place my cube. At that point, if I had one more cube, I could place it directly because the difference would be only one, not as previously two. Now, after placing all the cubes, we pass uh, the possibility to play a card to our opponent who does exactly the same things. We play the first round, after which we give the remaining eight cards to the players. Players play a second round and at the game's end, if the game finishes without, a, without an automatic victory, we pass on to the final scoring. The first thing done before the final scoring is the is the flipping of the cards placed face down after the first round. We compare the number of cubes on the cards played by both players and their affiliation. In such a case, we verify the we verify the difference between the number of cubes on both cards and the Soviet player would obtain two additional influence points because his card has more influence points. Now, it is also possible that both players chose cards from the same affiliation. For instance, because a player received five cards with the opponent's symbol during the first round. In such a case, the maximum number of influence points that a player can gain is three. It wouldn't be seven as you might expect, it would be three. So it's a way to, uh, to diminish the possible, uh, the possible outcome of obtaining a very uh, bad starting hand during the first round. After adjusting the score, thanks to, the, thanks to those additional assets, uh, we count every region on the board because at this point all the cards have been played so each of the six regions is complete and we can score each of them starting by Europe. Again the influence points are attributed to players controlling such regions and at the end we verify which player has the most number of influence points on the track. In case of a tie, so if the yellow cube remains at the middle 
the US player wins. Why the US player? Well, because at the beginning of the game, the Soviet player has the possibility to choose who starts the game, the US player or the Russian player. The same applies at the end of the first round, because in case of a tie in terms of points, it's the Soviet player who decides who goes first. If someone has more points than the opponent, it's the opponent who who has the hand at the end of the first round. And those are pretty it, all the rules governing the play of Iron Curtain. Now I would like to tell you what I think about this game, what I believe are its strong and a little bit weaker points. At the beginning of this review, I have asked a very provocative question. Is it possible to simulate the Cold War using a set of only 18 cards? I would say, to a certain degree, yes. And this game managed it in one sector, in the way that the game simulates the tension and this aspect of permanent conflict between two opposing blocks. Because the Cold War was all about it. It was always to be first in one region and to respond to what the other block does in another. So what Twilight Struggle does on a big board using three decks of cards, uh, markers uh, and additional counters has been, had been achieved here in a set of 18 cards. Of course, comparing both those two games is not the best idea because the approach is different, the scope is different, but in some way the same tension, the same feeling of tension of rivalry between two opposing blocks is pretty much the same in both games. And that's great because such a minimalistic design achieved the same thing that one of the greatest games of all time. What I think are the strong points of the Iron Curtain. The first thing are its rules. Those rules are pretty straightforward. This is a game easy to learn, easy to teach at the same time, also offering a huge amount of decisions to be taken during gameplay. And if I were to give you uh, one thing, one element of this game, which I believe is its strongest point, it would be it. It would be the tons of decisions that you have to take during a game. A game which, remember, lasts only 18, lasts only about 20 minutes, the time you use 18 cards. So you might think, how is it possible? Well, because of a lot of random things, a lot of factors that you have to take into consideration while playing the cards. The first element which will randomize gameplay, which will influence the fact, which will impact the fact that each and every game will be different, is the random distribution of cards. Each time you will receive a different set of cards. Of course, with 18 cards, sometimes you will receive the same set of cards. And you might tell, if I receive the same set of cards, the game will be very similar to the one that I played earlier. Well, not very much, because there are a lot of other factors which will differentiate those games. The first of them is the fact that each time you play a card, you can place it in a different way, in a different part of the tableau. So you will not be creating the same game map each time. Each time uh, some cards will be adjacent to others. Uh, you can put them on the top, on the bottom, you can also uh, ignore some restrictions if uh, the cards are block or blocked or absent from the board. So each time the game map will lo be looking very much different. The second aspect is that you will also have to carefully plan in what order to play the cards. Sometimes you will rush to play the opponent's cards in order to avoid him of obtaining avoid him obtaining some bonuses. In other in other place you will try to play them the Last possible at the last possible moment in order to minimize those gains or to minimize your losses. You will also have to carefully decide do I want to use the event or do I want to use the cubes on my own card. Each time those will be sometimes very agonizing decisions. 
You will also have to decide how to distribute those cubes. If you have four cubes to place, you have to decide. Do I strengthen some cards that I already control? Do I want to fight for other cards? Do I want to spread my sphere of influence? So, a few elements and such a number of decisions. I know very few games which offer such a number of decisions. I would tell even more. There are some Euro games in which you have a dozen of possible actions, hundreds of components, and still during your turn you can do one or only two things because, for instance, you have two or three coins left in your reserve and in order to, uh, to do all the other things that the game allows you to do, you had to possess more money. So you are blocked. In fact, this huge amount of possibilities is only possible if you have a certain number of assets. Here in the Iron Curtain, all those decisions are always available and they increase the replayability, they increase the tension, they increase also the decision-making process. But not to a point which would cause us to agonize, uh, to be agonizing at each decision. We won't be uh, taking very long turns. We will be just thinking a few moments and then playing our cards. So this is a game very quick to play. 15-20 minutes and you can reset, restart, replay, again reset and replay. Very, very good. What I really like is the fact that this game really nicely recreates the tension and this feeling of, uh, of uh, hit and run or uh, responding to our opponent's actions, so those elements which were part of the Cold War. If our opponent tries to dominate a region, do I want to respond by placing additional cubes or do I want to concentrate on another region? Well, this is all part of your strategy, but sometimes you will really fight for one or two places on the board. Some others will be ignored in this time until one of the players decides to change his focus very nice recreation of how the Cold War also worked. So what I think are the weaker points of this title? The first one is maybe a trivial one. In my opinion, the blue cubes used by the American player are sometimes not fully visible on the blue cards, especially on the European cards. The colors used on the cards and on the wooden cubes are the same. and Sometimes in a certain light, from a certain perspective, you can have trouble in counting the number of cubes or even in seeing a cube hidden somewhere on this huge blue part of the card. So the colors, the colors should be different. They are the same. Uh, differentiating them wouldn't cost anything, but it would increase this um, visibility of the elements. And I think this should have been done better. The second aspect, a mechanical one, concerns those, the random distribution of cards. Sometimes you will receive very bad card draws during the initial round, which means, for instance, that you receive five cards of your opponent. Of course, receiving five cards of your opponent means that the opponent probably has a lot of yours. But sometimes this initial distribution of cards is something that will well, will influence the outcome of the game. Because remember, after the first round, you have to keep one of those cards face down and you reveal it at the game's end. If you happen to receive five opponent's cards, you have to choose one of them. And this means that your opponent probably choosing his own card also, he will gain two, sometimes even three points from this operation, only because you received such cards at the beginning. So maybe it would be a nice idea to redistribute the cards if you were in such a way. The rules do not state anything about it. Well, I believe it had been tested. In my place, in my place it happened that I received only cards from my opponent. It was difficult to come back. It's not impossible, it's difficult, and I believe such an optional rule could be added. Maybe it is a balancing factor. Having said that, I believe this game really has no major flaws, it has no major issues, 
I really enjoyed it. I played it a lot. Uh, I spent most December playing this game both as a filler and also as a game that I that I especially just uh, put on my table and played several plays with different players and I always enjoyed it. I think it's a game which is a thing which will suit both war gamers who like the theme, both players who like Twilight Struggle and this uh, setting, but also players who are pretty keen on Euro games because it is so close to Euro to card games that this theme which at first glance might uh, uh, might be a war game theme is pretty uh, is pretty um, is very easily accepted by non war gamers and it is also one of the reasons why this game can suit a very large uh, a very large spectrum of players now this is a very good design and i strongly recommend that you try this small game this was a review of The Iron Curtain, published in Poland by Fox Games under the name of Żelazna Kurtyna. I hope you will revisit our channel in some time, check our other reviews, we have also some unboxings, and until then, have a fantastic day and see you next time.